Hey everybody, this is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Something I've observed lately and working with various people is regardless of the level of Taiji practitioner that I've been playing with, there is a point where Sun Kua goes, goes out the window. And by Sun Kua, as I mean the ability to relax into the hip area, relax the muscles and uh, connective tissue around the hip area allows the, the hip joint to function in the way it's designed. So it and the Kua is that really we were focusing on the, the connection between the leg, the thigh, and the torso. And it's what is actually in the classics they refer to as the waist. But it's, uh, you know, when we think of waist, we think about where you put your belt around. But the actually, we're, we're talking about the capacity of the, of the torso to interact with, the, with the, the thigh in a way that is really most powerful and fluid and dependable. So anyway, what, I, what I've noticed is that regardless of, of the skill level of the practitioner that I've been playing with, no matter how many decades they've been playing with, there is a cutoff point there. There's a point where it, it, that goes out the window, Sun Kuo. And that's because it is known as an intellectual thing at some level, and but maybe not, uh, embodied to the degree that you want. Now I got it because you know I was I needed it to compete in in push hands tournaments and I found it really necessary to get that at a very deep level. So I uh, it was kind of ground into me that whenever I executed properly things worked out just fine. When I didn't things didn't work out nearly so well. And it's something that if we don't have that that feedback from our external environment that is a tendency to, to let it go. So the um, solution other than training for push and tournaments would be to actually uh, bring that more into your conscious awareness and to actually really focus on the mechanics of what makes that happen and really bring that into your your being so that you can execute. So one of the places I really notice it uh, going out is whenever say we're asked in a, in a Taiji form to go on one leg to do to execute a kick or say a, 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 a um, golden rooster stands on, on left leg or something like that. They, whenever we do that, people have a tendency to freeze up, lock up the hip joint, and try to find balance there in order to be able to stick a leg out or lift a knee up. But in doing so, you, you've lost your root. You've lost your energetic connection with the earth because by locking up the qua in order to maintain that rigid stance, you are shutting off your energetic connection with the earth. And so getting it so that you can really count on your ability to get Sun Kua anytime, any place, I think is really essential. And I'd go so far as to say is of all the things that you do in Taiji Tran and form practice and the like, it, to, to generate a flow of energy that Sun Kua might be, well, let me just put it that your connection with the earth is the most important thing for that. That amplifies the chi more than anything else that I can think of. Now, speaking from my personal experience, but it's something that I, I'm, I'm pretty confident because I've tested it out on, on hundreds of people, and it's it seems to be it seems to be the case. So that is that your ability to meet the earth and to plug into the big chi of the yin energy of the earth is essential for not only filling up with chi to amplify your power, but also for disposing of 
energy that's been used. So it's it's very much a uh, uh, a coming and a going. So you're le letting it, the energy go. So getting that and really breaking it down. So the meditation we like to do today today is to really examine the feeling of that and really fine tune the uh, what it takes to establish a firm foundation in your legs, your that energetic connection with the earth, and then particularly whenever you want to do something with it. It's one thing to do it in a static posture, another thing to do it in a uh, in movement or whenever you are, say, executing a kick or something. So getting that. And the key to it with the sung and is that it is a, a relaxing down into the structure rather than a pushing away. And so our natural response, and it seems to be pretty universal, is that whenever we are stressed in, in, in any way is to lock up and to maintain our balance by pushing away from the earth. And that is the opposite of what we need to do in order to get to really establish that energetic connection. Because we're kind of choking off our 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 energy flow when we do that and also we also whenever we lock up the hip joint lock up uh, one side of the body it it tends to lock up the other one as well unless you're really conscious of being able to let go of that which is you know also a, a higher level skill so being able to uh, to free up your uh, your the, the quad of your supporting leg is also um, key to being able to uh, free up the insubstantial leg and to be able to do things with that, i.e. take a step or make a kick or, or lift a knee or whatever. So uh, let us stand up and let's take a look at that and explore it. What I'd like you to do is to get a chair um, or something to something to support you. you can use the back of a couch or, or something if, whatever, if uh, you don't have a chair handy I'm going to use a chair because the key I have found to training this stuff is to bypass the normal stress response that comes when you're afraid you're going to fall over or you're afraid you're you're going to lose your balance or even something as simple as as be uh, embarrassed that you you shook that you didn't you didn't look cool doing it so being able to have something to support you then allows you to explore a little deeper what we're talking about here so the key we start with is is the the ball of the foot so you if uh, for those following at home you'll remember that that is that that spot there that big knuckle there on the inside of your foot along the big toe line and we're using that as our our focal point that's that's the point of orientation it doesn't mean we're just standing on that and pivoting on that it means that that the, the weight is spread throughout the foot but that is our 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 locating point okay so we, we feel that and then we get the uh, and the idea is to then set the knee okay so once you feel that point there you bring your knee so pick up your back foot that really emphasizes the you know the the substantial leg so you want to feel that the knee is unlocked and if I, you look at it from the side, you can see that my knee is just slightly, it, it's, it's unlocked, but it's not so far forward that it's, it's over the toes. It's, you know, over the first third of the foot, the front third of the foot. Look at, looking at it from the, from, the, from the front there, you can see that, that the, the knee is, is lined up so that I'm centering around that, that ball of the foot. 
So what we're going to play with first is to just really focus on that. So by picking up, you know, your heel and just really allowing your weight to settle into that can give you a, a lot of feedback about where your edge is in terms of your support structure, where that, that the firmness, the, the confidence that you have. So just bring your knee, uh, actually, uh, yeah, bring your knee out toward the, the, your, 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 the outside of your foot, toward the little toe, and just get notice what that does to your balance, to your, your connection with the earth. And then bring it back to the center line and just feel that connection and feel the, the firmness of that. And you may notice that your body resists this. And I'm not just speaking to the people who are you know, present here. Now, I'm talking to anybody who might be watching this on YouTube as well. So it notice that there is a difference whenever you rock your body out to the side and have your weight over the outside of your foot. And it has a tendency to destabilize. You also may notice that your body fights it. You know, you might tense up and do that. That's part of the reason why we have the chair here. That's part of the reason we got the support of some sort so that we can uh, really get that feeling of it because this is not natural, what, what I'm asking you to do. This is, nature didn't prepare you for this. This is something different. Nature wants you to push away. That's, that's what we've all been doing since we learned how to walk. And we're saying, no, no, we, we're going the opposite direction. We are, we are bypassing our natural instinct to shove away and to tense up. We're saying, no, no, we're going down. And that means that we have to build up the supporting network, the muscles and the connective tissue and the bones that are underneath this that, that are giving support. And that is it's what I consider a yin support. That is, it's, it's holding you up rather than pushing away. So it having that and learning to really to, to practice this to the point where you start to feel the, you know, feel the burn. You, you want to feel that, that, oh yeah, you're doing some work there. Your muscles are actually, they're, they're, having, they're having to work to, to do this, but not in the way that they're used to. It's not like in, you know, if you're, you're, you're pushing away and like when you're doing a, a squat or something like that, it's, it's, it's for, ah, oh, we're sinking down. And so now just push your, but to keep your foot over the, 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 you feel that ball of the foot there, but, but move your butt out to the side so that you have, you can notice that if I drop a plumb bob down, it'd be like, you know, be a couple of inches wide of my, the outside of my foot there. And, and notice that there's tension on the outside of your body. Many of us will have, have a lot of excessive tension in the iliotibial band. That's a band of of tissue, the muscles that that connect your knee to your hip on the outside. And that's because we lock up the hip joint and we shove out to the side. So we want to ah, bring that back in and notice that, oh, the iliotibial band gets a chance to take a break. It's not being stressed as much. So having that feeling there, that that relaxed sense of sinking into the leg then allows us to free up the quad. So the quad, this hip joint, you know, the inguinal crease is, is where we are really focusing on this place right here, getting that so that the muscles there, and you can actually feel into that and notice if you are tense there at all. If that's nice and soft and gooey, then you're, you're probably doing it correctly. So you wanna have that lined up. So, you notice that the, the line of force, if I drop straight down through my body's mass, it's on the inside of my foot. If I take my body's mass and push it out to the side, then 
it takes a lot more energy to, to maintain my structure. So I want to, being a lazy guy, I want to uh, follow the path of least resistance there and follow the line of force there. The advantage of that, of course, is to, when I do that, I am replenished. Energy is replenishing the whole system as I do that. Everything is filling up and at the same time, emptying up. So there is a flow. So energy is moving through and it's, it's coming, bubbling up and it's, it's also sinking down and moving out. And, and that constant cycling of energy is what we're going for. We're not storing chi. We are learning how to handle increased chi flow. So we're never using much of our own personal energy. We are using the big chi to, to make all this happen. So we have getting that, that sense of, of, of confidence there in that leg is, is a real key part of that. So let's go to the, let's go to the other leg. Let's go to the left leg now, because the right leg might be getting a little tired. And you want to do the same thing here. You want to feel the ball of the, of the left foot <clears throat> and um, you know, set the left knee so that it's slightly forward of vertical. So that your weight going down, you're feeling it in the front part of the foot, in the big toe part of the foot. It's like you're you're getting ready to dive off a diving board or something like that. You're you're feeling that ah that bounce there, and then you are feeling that you're setting that so that establishing your relationship between your knee and the ball of your foot establishes this this post that enables us to root enables us to to connect to the earth in a way that we're able to hold our position in space and generate energy from that position so having my hand on this then allows me to ah so push away from the earth and really get the feeling of that rising up and then ah sinking down and really feeling yourself when you sink down, you're not releasing it. You're not pushing the knee out. You are releasing here. You're, you're sitting down into your leg. And so you really want to feel the ball of the foot there. Feel the weight throughout the foot, but you particularly want that focal point in the ball of the foot. And same thing here. I want you to kind of just push your knee up, bring your knee away from the center line and more out to the outside of your foot and notice what that does. Because a lot of times when we're moving, we're, we're, the knee is flopping around and this causes a lot of knee problems. So if you bring the knee back to the center line, notice that the knee almost disappears, at least in terms of stress, in terms of, of of muscular tension. You'll feel something in the thigh because that's what muscles are supposed to do. They're supposed to, they're supposed to support us. They do the work there. But we're, it's a yin support. You wanna feel that. You're still feeling weight in your heel, but you're also primarily focusing on that ball of the foot. And push your butt out to the side, lock that up and just notice how that affects everything, how that tightens up that iliotibial band. And I take it back to center. And if, and if you've heard this stuff before, please bear with me because if we want to take it out of the intellectual realm and really bring it into the body mind. We do that by take it just a little bit past your point of comfort until you can, you know, you start to say, oh, when I go outside of my comfort zone, where do I go? What, what, where do I, where do I take it? Because this is the, this is the key, because this is where, you know, let's say if someone is pushing on you and push hands, do you lock up or do you ah, take it in and receive that energy? You know, if you're, if you're executing a kick, do you push away and lock up so that you can, then you can kick out? Or do you ah, sink down 
in order to be able to kick. So this is what we're, it's like I say, it's not natural. And so it's spending a little time examining these ideas and really feeling into your body. And I'm breaking down very simply so that people who have not necessarily been following along in this series are just tuning in for the first time can also get a chance to explore this. These are, these are really fundamental ideas that, that make it, uh, that make it work. It gets the, gets the chi circulating, provides a firm support to the lower body. It allows the insubstantial leg, the leg that's not supporting, to be able to relax and move freely. It allows your upper body to relax because you are you're not having to hold on because you don't trust your structure. And also, if you can get it so that this becomes your default setting, you immediately go there. Someone touches me and immediately, I feel sun kwa. It's not like, oh, what am I supposed to do now? It's like, ah, there's, a, there's an immediate response in my body, I feel that. And I know only because I know that that's going to work better than if I tense up. Tense up makes me brittle and hard and not rooted. Whereas if I ah, if I get sun kwa, then I'm I'm much uh, I'm much more able to to hold my position and move freely from that position, be able to explore other options. It also has a tendency to calm you down. To by feeling into that yin support, you have a tendency to calm and center yourself. It makes everything more more powerful. You have that effortless power that comes from that. It's easier to create jin from whenever you have that energetic connection. So using the left leg now, we're gonna feel the ball of the foot, set the knee and then push away and then uh, sink down and then spiral down to the left a little bit. And so notice that when you're doing that, where when you spiral down, you're releasing the quad and you're turning at the same time, where is the, the contact point in your foot? Where do you feel that? So this is a real key point here, like, Ah, you're you're feeling into that. Do you maintain that that connection to the ball of the foot, or whenever you turn, do you, do you lock up and pull the weight to the outside of the foot? So just do that again. So just feel the ball of the foot, set the knee, and then push away, and then uh, spiral down to the left. And notice if you are maintaining that contact to the inside of your foot. But that's where you're getting your, your support from. And then from that, pick up your right foot and place it forward. Empty step, you're not putting any weight into it, but you're just picking that up. Can you do that without shaking your body around? And that's why the chair comes in handy. Because you're looking say, okay, where do I cheat? When I do that, when I step back, where do I cheat? Where do I, uh, you know, feel into that? So then by doing this, you get a chance to explore. You push away, sink down, spiral down, pick up the heel and step forward without any weight in that. But you're not transferring that. You're just holding on to that. Your knee, knee is staying set. And then you pick up the foot and step back. Now we're gonna do it with the right foot. Still keep the chair over on your left. So turn the foot out a little bit, feel the ball of the foot, set the knee, and take a moment and really find that connection. You wanna feel through your body, feel the power connection through your body. 
so that uh, when you push away and then uh, spiral down, you're maintaining that power connection there. And feel how that your insubstantial leg really empties out, you know, and you can, it gets nice and fluid. So check that. Holding onto the chair gives you the freedom to explore that. Okay. So then you pick up your left foot and step forward and just place it down. And the idea is, can you be fluid? Can you totally relax that? And you're getting less and less dependent on the chair as you do that. But keep the chair around for a little bit so that you're feeling the connection with the, with the right leg again. You pick up the knee, you pick up the foot and just hold that. So here we have the knee up. So we're feeling that. And how much are you dependent on this chair to keep your, keep your center, keep your balance? This is something you get to work on. This is, you can spend a long time trying to do it without a prop and it will, you're gonna probably pick up a lot of bad habits when you do that. But if you have a prop there, you can then say, oh no, what's, how can I maintain that energetic connection throughout? And you'll notice that maybe your leg is, is a little fatigued from, from just doing that simple, that simple one step there. You may be able to run five miles, but, but whenever you go to this yin support, you might find yourself like, oh, that's, that's hard work. So do it again. So you're, Push away, sink down, spiral down to the right, and pick up the left knee and place the foot down. Pick up the knee and step back. And I go back to 50-50. And just stand there, just, just allow your hands to come down to your sides and just feel into the energetic connection. Feel into the chi flow that you've generated just for this, just a few minutes of, of this exercise. So one of the things we're, we're learning to do by doing this is learning to tolerate an enhanced chi flow. Because that is really at the core of not just the internal martial arts, but also the whole Chinese model of health is get lots of chi and circulate it well, is really the, you know, you can break both down into those two key components there. Lots of chi and circulate it well. So right now you got a lot of chi circulating. You're feeling it in your hands, you're feeling the throbbing, pulsing, tingling, there's the hands are, are definitely connected up. So now we're going to take a chair over to the other side. And the, the opening, one that I, I teach, and I think it's, it's very useful, I, I call it the most important move in the, in the Taiji form, and that is to be able to, you start with the weight 50-50, feeling, you feel the balls of both feet. And now you shift to the ball of the right foot. You feel into that. And so being able, notice that whenever you start to feel the ball of the right foot, you're withdrawing attention from the ball of the left foot and it becomes your prime focus. So what we're doing is by directing consciousness, we are making that point more substantial. It has more substance now. So even though the weight is still 50-50, it is becoming more substantial just by the fact that we are attending to it. Now set the knee so that of the right, the right knee so that you're feeling the ball of that right foot even more. You're feeling like, oh, you're pushing down and pushing in. 
a nail down into the floor by just by, by bringing the knee into a position. You're looking for that sweet spot. Where does my knee and ball of my foot, where does that connection provide the maximum support? And then, so for the purpose of this exercise, we're gonna push away just to be able to really get the, you know, recognize that tendency we have already to push away from the earth and then ah, spiral down to the left. So we're loading up the, the right leg and by doing so we're emptying out the left leg. So I like to think of it as like 30% into, uh, it's like 70% uh, in the right leg and 30% and in the left right now. So just feeling that and we're going back to feeling into that verticality, that your central equilibrium, really expanding your awareness down through your foot and into the earth. And at the same time, reaching up through the crown of your head and into the sky and feeling your body attuning to the axis that central axis, central pillar. So now you're gonna turn very gently without pushing up, without really, without, without adjusting anything. You're just gonna turn your body and you wanna keep your center over the ball of that right foot as you're turning. So you're, now you've, by turning, you've increased the amount of of support that the right leg is doing. It has become even more substantial and the left leg even, even less so. So you got about 90% in the right leg now. Now pick up your heel. And as you do that, you sink a little bit more into that right leg. Whereas the natural tendency is to push away, we're, gonna, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna, ah, we're going to spiral down as we pick up that heel. So we're feeling into that, feeling into the, the support of that. Because then when we pick up the knee and we're exaggerating it for our purposes here for this exercise, but we wanna pick up that knee so that we can really feel and put the foot down and pick it up again. And how much do you have to adjust your body in order to make that happen? Pick it up and then step out to the side and keeping your center over the inside of your right foot. You put the foot down now, your left foot down. So now you're, you know, just got like 10% of the weight in there. So we're going to start to activate the substantiality of the left foot. Feel the ball of the left foot. So just by doing that, we're starting to make the shift. We're, whoa, we're creating the flow, the energy flow into the left leg now. It becomes substantial. Do that ball, set the left knee. That's the next step. Feeling into that substantiality there. Feel the chi the energy that you are generating by doing this, just by making that energetic connection. And you're gonna feel a, a give and take between the right and left legs as you do this. The chi is going to, is going to vary. You're gonna start emptying out the right leg and filling up the left. So now push away with that left foot Pushing away and then sinking down, spiraling down to the right. So you're starting to load up the left leg. As you do that, you empty out the right leg a little more. Starting to fill into that, that left qua. You're sinking down sung qua, feeling that, that support there. And 
turn without coming up. You want to turn and just pick up the toes of your the ball, you know, the front part of your right foot as you turn. So that now you are back to 50-50. And pause. And just feel into your stance. Feel into the energy in your hands, but then also notice it throughout the whole body mind. Feel that whole body energetic connection, that sense of fullness. Also notice how you feel really rock solid. Your connection to the earth is really profound at this point. And the energy flow between your your body and the earth, your body and the sky, is cranked up a notch. Good. Now we're going to take it. We're going to take a step into a bow stance. So. Pivot on your, let's say you sink into your left foot, pivot on your right heel. So your weight is in your left leg. You feel the ball of the foot, set the knee. So now you're going to feel the ball of the, of the right foot and push the knee out without transferring any weight into it yet. You're going to feel that. Now feel the connection between the right knee and the ball of the right foot. So you're starting to create a substantiality there. Still holding on to the chair so we really can examine those places where we fudge it, those places where we kind of get by. You want to get it so that you're so confident of that, of, of this. So, so now you push away from with your right leg and then uh, spiral down into the right leg. So you're loading up the right leg, releasing the right claw. You're softening that. And as you do that, you're softening the left claw as well. So your left leg gets very light, very insubstantial, because you're trusting the left leg to do the work for you. You want to keep your center on the inside of the right foot. But you pick up your left heel, you want to sink even a little more into that right leg. So you really are responding to this impending step forward by ah, really trusting in the sung, resisting the natural inclination to push away to make that step and to kind of push, rock to the side. You're, ah, you're spiraling down. So then you can pick up your left foot and step forward and step back and step forward and step back. And you wanna take away as much of the wobble in your stance as you can. And you'll notice that this takes some work to do, it requires some effort on your, the part of your, your right leg to be able to, to do this. But that's okay, that's what legs do. They're, they're designed to hold us up. And the more you, more you can invest in this now, pays off huge dividends later. You start to, get stronger rather than weaker as you age. So now feel the ball of your left foot and push your left knee forward so that you're locking in to that place, that sweet spot in your left leg. You're not transferring weight into it yet. You're not, you're not shifting. You're just establishing 
and there will be some weight there, but you're not, it's not taking a load yet. It's just the, the weight of the, the leg itself. And you're feeling that contact there. So you're establishing the position that you're moving into. You want to have that, that's, that's your, your, the dock you're going to be setting into. And that's the, the foundation. So then you push away with the left leg and then uh, spiral down to the right. And as you do that, you empty out the right leg a bit and load up into the left claw. You really feel into that, like, oh, feel that. And notice if you rock back into your heel, or, you know, if you want to still feel that contact with the, the ball of the, of, of the left foot as you're doing that. So as you're starting to load up that, you're creating more substantiality in the left leg. And release down, down, down. Really feel into that. So now you're going to turn. And when you turn, how do we turn? We feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee. And then we, we're going to activate at the waist. Here we're using the qua and the, the yao, the, the, the lower back, to turn the body. So it's, in essence, instead of pushing the body, instead of pushing the body over, we're actually pulling the body to go back to center. So it's, so get that, get that idea. So the left leg is providing the impetus to, to pull. This isn't the only way to do this. this is the way that, that I learned how to do it and, and I find it very effective. You can also uh, push the body into doing it, but that, that has its own uh, liabilities that we can discuss at another time. But by pulling in, we are leading the chi rather than pushing the chi. So feel into that. So we're here, we turn and this should be a really smooth motion. Notice that my butt is not jutting out to the side. I am rotating on that central pillar. You need to feel into that. I, I want you to feel some fatigue in your leg when you do this. I want you to, to notice that, oh, this is work because we have to get over that barrier. That barrier that that, oh, if it's if it if it takes any amount of effort, then it must be wrong. It's like, no, no, it's going to take, it's going to take work to, to make that happen. You're going to, you're going to feel it if you if you're doing it correctly. The key here is, is not, it's not that we're eliminating effort, it's that we're, elim we're eliminating counter effort. That is, we're, we're not, we're taking the handbrake off. So we're not pushing against our own resistance. And step back. Okay, let's do the, the right leg real quick. This time is getting short here. And uh, so, we're going to pivot out on the left heel, okay? So feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, push away and then spiral down to the left. So you're loading up the left leg. So feel into that, okay? And go back to center, feel the ball, set the knee, and ah, release down, spiral down to the left. So you're loading up feeling the weight over the ball of the foot as you're doing that, keeping your hand on your trusty support system here. So that now whenever you, you pick up your knee, you are maintaining your center. Okay, so feel that ball, knee, spiral down, sink, pick up the knee and step. Pick up the knee and step. Place the ball, or place the foot down, set the ball, 
push the knee forward, setting the knee. Before you shift any weight into it, you're just at that, that leg is about as empty as it can be. So there's a, there's a it's still kind of loosey goosey. You want to feel that and you feel the ball of the left foot or the right foot. You set the right knee, push away and then uh, spiral down to the, to the left. So you're loading up into that right leg. Feel into that, feel the coming down, feel the, the, the support of that. And then turn back to center. And feel into that. So bring your arms out, just feel the support, the, the power that this particular stance gives you. Push away and uh, sink down. We're ready to load up that right leg. So you're feeling, feeling the support, feeling the energy. And then feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the left and step back with the right foot. And good. So let's just close this up. Inhale and disappear the chi. Great. Okay, grab a seat, please. <laughs> a mutual support system <laughs> your buddy <laughs> you're, you're on mute rick <laughs> can you unmute <laughs> Yeah, you tell me when I can stop grabbing my seat. <laughs> you can put the chair down now, Rick. Okay, but then, but then do I have to grab the seat or do I? That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nick. Can you talk a little bit about um, alignment between the line of the foot and that and that support line on uh, from the big toe through the ball and the alignment of the pelvis, the hips in in this and where the sweet spot is in terms of being able to to really be some qua in the hips. If I understand your question, Lynn is having is a little puzzled. <laughs> uh, I, I think I can I can rephrase it. But, yeah, I think yeah. you should rephrase it. <laughs> okay. Exactly what he's been telling you. Please do. Okay. okay. So what uh, what I find is that in order for my hips to when I'm single weighted, especially in order for my self to get the optimum for me, it seems like that the, the line of my pelvis can't be perpendicular to the line of my foot. If I, if, if I, I have to turn my hips and foot relative to one another have to be not a square, you know, not a right angle, but slightly turned out when I'm, when my waist, when my hips are perpendicular to the line of my foot, I, there's it seems inherently tense in the hip he means if you're if you're standing with your foot straight forward it's really hard to get sun qua for him if, if you if you turn your toes out it's easier to get sun qua for him right, i mean let me, uh, does that make sense full screen, yeah. full screen. okay so what i'm hearing you say is 
if your your foot is out like this, right? And you're setting your knee, so the, we got the line there through that, mm -hmm. that in order that what you're saying is for your your uh, ideal for you is to have a turn of the body. The, the hips are not perpendicular to this rather than than like this. Yeah, not right. that not that big of a turn. Not not that radical, but yeah, the notion is yeah. if especially with all of the weight in one foot, if I like were to pick up my left knee now, if I'm you, right? If my hips, my hips are square to the line of my foot, I'm I feel as though I'm having to really hold that hip tight. If I relax that, my body doesn't, I don't do anything, but it just normal, it just sinks into a slightly off kilter alignment with my pelvis to the line of my foot. Okay. Uh, what I would recommend is using our little friend, the chair to, to you know, let's say, Go like this, and to do it so it's it's turned like this way, the way you're describing, mm -hmm. and square, and then also pivoting the other way, so that your 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 hips are pointing over in that direction, that direction, that, that direction, yeah. so that you're able to to be able to be sung qua in any of them, okay. uh, uh, yeah. but at least 90 degrees. Yeah. Oddly yeah. enough, turning to the right, I mean, in that instance, right, in that example, it's only uh -huh. in that center alignment position that I have problem. That's why I'm, I was kind of curious okay. about what, what's going on. My suggestion is do it with your, your little buddy, the chair. And, and and just do that and until you make friends with it. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I, th I, I think it's valuable to be able to occupy any any point in that in that that turning radius there. You know, let's say let's say it's a it's 90 degrees or maybe even more, maybe 120, you know, to be able to 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 occupy any place on that, it should be it should be accessible, I think. It feels like it is to me. So okay. you know, and the way way I would practice it is first of all with the chair till I get confident of it, and then do it and have someone pushing on my hand, on my on my body as I'm doing it, so that I can I can test whether or not I remain sun qua throughout that whole thing. So that that that'd be my approach to it. Thanks. I'll push. <laughs> She's a pushy broad. <laughs> um cool uh uh anybody else jonathan the value of the chair for detecting uh jbs you might want to at another time at least show right that moving that if you're doing it right beside the chair different leg lifts if the chair moves you'll know that's a detection that you're you're, you're sticking your butt out we were having some good success with that a while back over the summer doing that with you. And by JBS, uh, Jonathan is means as a shorthand for jutting butt syndrome. And uh, so that's whenever we push the butt out as a way of, of keeping, keeping, uh, you know, our balance where we, when we've lost, we've gone off center. And uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that, that is a, a way of doing it. But, what I'm referring to there is uh, is to using a using a chair there to to be able to and this is kind of what we were just doing that is to be able to when you're spiraling down so keeping keeping something close close at hand there so if I'm if I'm doing you know if I'm pushing my butt out I'm gonna feel I'm gonna push against the chair you know and so having having something there. To, to bump against is a way of doing it. But I think it's probably just as good, actually it, doing something where you're actually looking at yourself, having a, sticking your cell phone out there and, and showing yourself as you're, as you're doing it, projecting your image. And then so you can see yourself as you are, are doing it, probably 
the best way, the, the, the high tech way of going about it. So you're getting, so you're, you're seeing if indeed you're, 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 you're pushing out to the side as you're trying to do that. Okay, uh, great. Thank you all so much. You. It's been great. Appreciate it. See you next week. Bye bye.